everybody. We're going to get started here with Dr. Dan Murphy's webinar. I'd like to introduce Dr. Dan Murphy to you guys, who's a professor of mine, like I'm sure he was for many of you. He was voted the International Chiropractic Association's Chiropractor of the Year in 2009. His website is dedicated to the scientific validation of how the human body functions. Dr. Murphy is booked 50 weeks out of the year, traveling the world, teaching others how to achieve, how to achieve true health and wellness in their practices and their own lives. Dr. Murphy is also one of the most respected doctors in this field. I'm going to now bring him on the line. Dr. Murphy, this webinar is yours. Hi, everyone. I'm looking at the picture of myself there, and that is actually what I look like. That picture was taken last week, and I am uh, 56 years of age. I am a uh, full professor at Life Chiropractic College West. I've been associated with Life West now for, um, for 29 years. It's a precious relationship for me. I've been a, I've been a chiropractor for 34 years. I've been at Life West for 29 years. And uh, what you're looking at there is uh, the note about my elevation to a full professorship at uh, Life Chiropractic College West. And um, those of you that know me um, know that I, I teach a lot of classes. I, um, I write a lot of things, uh, chapters and books and articles. Uh, I am not a primary researcher. I'm what they call a literature searcher, which means I am constantly reviewing the literature to see things that we can do to make ourselves um, healthier and, and to live longer. My personal goal is to live to be 132 years of age. The reason that number is that I would love to see my oldest daughter turn 100, and she came when I was... Uh, uh, 32 years of age, so I'm trying to push up to 132. So I've, 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 I've done everything I can trying to figure out the strategies that can help me do that, short of caloric restriction. I've tried caloric restriction, and, and frankly, I would rather be dead than do caloric restriction. It just seems like it's absolutely no fun. So I've come up with a lot of other strategies, of which I'm going to share with you today, by the way. Uh, you're looking at my biography. Oh, it's a little old. It's a 2009. But uh, you kind of get an idea about uh, who I am and, and what I've accomplished in my career so far. What I did yesterday is I uh, went to the PubMed database. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the PubMed database, the PubMed database is, quote, unquote, the real literature. Uh, the PubMed database is the search engine for the National Library of Medicine of the United States of America that is physically located in Bethesda, Maryland. This database has around 20 million articles, probably just over that now. It tends to log in about another 7,000 articles per day. And w looking at what, what makes us old and what makes us ill, um, the, the theory that is most prevalent in the literature is called uh, the free radical theory of aging, and that you can search it very easily by, by just going to the PubMed database and typing, typing in reactive oxygen species, which I did yesterday. By the way, the, the call letters, if anyone want to do this on your own, is www. PubMed, which is P-U-B-M-E-D dot G-O-V. And then that will give you a page where you can type in whatever you want on the search bar. Last night I typed in reactive oxygen species and just take a look. There's 113,166 articles that will be pulled up by typing in those keywords as of last night. I also typed in the words on a product that I'm going to talk about today. It's called Protandum. If you go to the PubMed database and you type in Protandum, there are eight articles that have been published so far. All of them are fun. All of them are very interesting. The one that I'm going to talk a little bit extra about is the very first one that was ever done, and it's uh, number eight here. So I'm, I, a little bit later in the presentation, I'm going to show you some specific components of that article. But if you look through all of these articles but the very first one, which is the most recent, all the rest of these articles have a common author, and it's this guy here. His name is uh, Joe McCord. And uh, McCourt's going to be a big player. I mean, this guy discovered one of the, maybe the most important thing in longevity, and he did it back in 1969. Yet a lot of people, including healthcare providers, uh, do not understand what it is. And so part of my assignment this day is to make sure that you know what it is. Uh, I went to the very first out of those 113 plus articles, the very first article on free radical and aging uh, was done by this guy, once a guy named Denim Harmon. And he was from the University of California at Berkeley. And he got it published in 1956 in the Journal of Gerontinology. So this is what they call the PubMed abstract. So I just, I just popped it up. And then, as you can say, see over here, you can get the full article. So I did that. And I just scanned it into my presentation. And it's one, two, three pages long. But I scored certain parts of it. 
uh, jumping back up for a second, aging, a theory based on free radical and radiation chemistry, Denim Harmon, MD, PhD, from the University of California at Berkeley, which is not too far from Life Chiropractic College West, where I'm part-time faculty. Uh, both are in Alameda County in Northern California. The parts that I scored, deleterious side effects of free radicals, which are normally produced in the course of cellular metabolism, since genes would be expected to be attacked occasionally, it would be anticipated that mutations and cancer would result. A slow oxidation of connective tissue by molecular oxygen catalyzed by metals. And this is going to be important for us this day, this presentation. Looking at metals right here. Metals are important because when we get in contact with metals, we increase the production of free radicals, which means neutralizing these free radicals becomes ever so much more important. Further down says increased cellular concentrations of an easily reduced compound such as cysteine, which affords some radiation protection, would be expected to slow down the aging process and thereby to put off the appearances of disease, diseases associated with it. The key word in this paragraph is actually the word cysteine, which is why I, under, I scored it under, with, uh, with red there. That's because cysteine is an amino acid. And the key is, is when cysteine exists as a component of a protein, and that proteins are put together by genes, so that if you could turn on genes that produce proteins that have cysteine, you are better at neutralizing free radicals. Now, this is 1956, and remember, this is part of what I will tell you Dr. Joe McCord did. He figured out a way to upregulate these genes that are related to this and other ways to neutralize free radicals. Lastly, hydrogen donors, such as once again cysteine, for example, might be a benefit in the fields of cancer, chemotherapy, and nutrition. We're going to look at it specifically this day from a nutritional perspective. Summary, aging on the degenerative diseases associated with it are attributed basically to the deleterious side effects of free radicals on cellular constituents and on connective tissues. The free radicals probably arise largely through reactions involving molecular oxygen catalyzing the cells by oxidative enzymes and in the connective tissues by trace metals such as such as we will look at, at, at a number of them. My favorite books on this, I, I'm a book reader. Those of you that know me know that my passion is reading technical books. This book I found to be very interesting, um, uh, a book on uh, antioxidant adaptation, its role in free radical pathology. So much of what I'm going to cover with, with, with all of you for the rest of this webinar is in fact well summed up in this particular book. It's kind of technical. I also like this book. I know that some of you that are listening to me are, are, are trainers. This is one of the most <coughs> awesome books ever because this is the guy that got America exercising. His name is Ken Cooper. Uh, some of you who are younger don't remember Ken Cooper, but in, 19, in the late 60s, he started the aerobic movement. He wrote a book on aerobics. In fact, he's actually the guy that invented the word aerobics. But after 26 years of research, he says there's a problem, and that is if you over-exercise and don't have adequate antioxidant defenses, you actually accelerate the aging process and the degenerative disease process. So when you look at the words up there next to his picture, Delay the signs of aging and reduce the risk of cancer and heart disease with this powerful new prevention program. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the best stuff in prevention of these free radical things that I have seen so far in the PubMed database. Um, this book here is extremely readable. In fact, I believe all of you that are listening to me should read this book if you have not done so already. I know a lot of you have already read this book. A lot of you have my suggestion, The Antioxidant Miracle by Les Packer, also from the University of California, Berkeley, one of the top antioxidant researchers in the world today. Very simple book to read, like it quite a bit. This book, in contrast, is quite technical. The, the, the message is the same. Being a technical book, the cost is much higher. It's like $138 to buy this 2002 book, Nutrition and Immune Function by Philip Calder. But the message is the same. It's all about free radicals and antioxidation and the things that we can do to make our, our lives better and longer simultaneously. Um, this is the best book, in my view, that has ever been written in world history in terms of, of health. And it's written by uh, a recently retired neurosurgeon from Jackson, Mississippi. His name is Russell Blaylock. It's titled Health and Nutrition Secrets That Can Save Your Life. 
for those of you who desire to be the best, for those of you who have listened to me in actual seminars before, know how highly I think of this guy and this book. I think it's the book that all of us should, should know about, particularly because it's right on topic for what we're doing today. Specifically, if you look at the very first chapter of the book, do all degenerative changes have a common cause? You see the number one there. This is how the book begins. Do all degenerative changes have a common cause? Well, they do. It says, if you look what I scored in red, our cells are producing destructive particles called free radicals, and that over a lifetime, these free radicals chip away at our cells. We call this process aging. Oxygen is a powerful destroyer of life. Few of us are aware that this, that, that this same life-giving oxygen is slowly killing us and making us sick. The reason is oxygen becomes a free radical as a component of just normal breathing. So when you exercise more, you breathe more. When you breathe more, you make more free radicals. And it is even more critical for people that are exercising to take these concepts seriously. We have to neutralize these free radicals if we want to avoid degenerative changes, if we want to slow down the aging process, etc. Dr. Blaylock further says that when the free radical reaction begins, it is these fatty acids that are damaged. This is important. The reason I scored this is because some of the best ways that they assess if, a, if an approach to health is reducing the free radical damage, they are looking at the free radical damage that is done to the fatty acids. When they are damaged, it is measurable. So that tells us just how much damage is happening in our bodies. And consequently, if we're doing something to stop that damage, it is also measurable. Free radical damage to these membranes severely affects cellular function. And it does. The, the, the organ of perception for the cell is the membrane. The brains of the cell is the membrane. The key to cell physiology is the membrane. The membrane is made out of these fats. When these fats are damaged by free radicals, that's when the cell starts to become dysfunctional. And when the cells are dysfunctional, the person that owns those cells become dysfunctional. Yet there are solutions, and that's what I'm going to get to. Fats are nothing but a bunch of carbons that are strung together. So what I did here in this slide is I, I strung together four carbons. The free radicals primarily damage what is called the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. So I put the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond right in the middle of the slide. That's the equal sign. That's where the free radicals will attack. And when they attack that, they damage that fat, and then you're in trouble. By the way, when they damage that fat, they call it lipid peroxide. And lipid peroxides are very deleterious to human health and physiology, and yet you can measure them. There is a number of ways to measure them. I will show you probably the best accepted way to measure them as I continue down this presentation. Uh, the origins of free radicals, metabolism, that just means breathing, inflammation, stress, environmental toxins. I'm going to talk primarily about those four guys as we continue down this presentation. I'm also a very big fan of this book by Dr. David Perlmutter. Uh, he is a neurologist living in Naples, Florida. He's written a number of books on the topic. I think that he's way smart. I advocate all of his books. My favorite book, at least for my family, since I have two daughters, <clears throat> is that he, he did a book a few years ago that claims that you can raise your children's IQs 30 points by the time they go to kindergarten if, in fact, you can appropriately reduce the consequences of toxins and the free radicals that they generate. In fact, Dr. Perlmutter, in his book, The Better Brain Book, which came out in 2004, in this book he defines what makes a toxin toxic? What makes a toxin toxic? In chapter 8 of this book, you can see what I scored in red there. What makes toxins toxic is the fact that they rev up free radical production and promote inflammation. Now, you've got to get the point. <clears throat> this is the point. If we live in an environment that has lots of toxins, we get lots of free radicals. The more toxins in the environment, the more free radicals we get. The more free radicals we get, the more critical it is that we neutralize them before they do damage to cellular physiology. Uh, and then you take a look at this. And this should take everyone on this webinar's breath away. Referencing time, May 24, 2010, you can see the date there in the bottom right. The, they sum up, if you look at the actual words on the, on, the, on, the, on the first paragraph, I'm going to scroll down where I blew them up a little bit, says, on May 6, the President's Cancer Panel published an alarming 240-page report on the risk of cancer from chemicals and other substances in the environment. The true burden of environmentally induced cancer has been grossly underestimated, the reports authors conclude. The American people, even before they are born, are bombarded continuously with these dangerous exposures. 
the point of all this is that all of these chemicals are toxins. Toxins damage the DNA. The DNA damage is then linked to cancer. Even the President's Cancer Panel is agreeing to this coming out in 2010. May 6th of 2010 is when this was in fact released. The point of it is we have so many environmental toxins now that we are getting so many free radicals that a strategy to neutralize these things before we damage our physiology is critical. It's never been more critical than this time in our history. In fact, if you look at the President's uh, uh, Cancer Panel's recommendations, they're, they're stunning. I mean, they say, well, drink filtered tap water. It says nothing out of plastic. It, it says only eat organic down there at number four. It says don't eat meat that's been exposed to antibiotics and growth hormones. I mean, if, when you do that, you're talking about you're knocking out every grocery store and restaurant in America today. The point of it is we're all getting toxins all day long, every day. And these toxins rev up the production of free radicals. And the result is almost all of us are suffering from chronic, uncurable, degenerative problems, that there are things that we can do to reduce the risk of these things. Uh, this one coming out of time just very recently, coming out in May of this year, uh, if, in the health and science section, if you just look at the words on the top, that are scary each year that I scored in red, each year about 27 trillion pounds of chemicals are produced or imported in the United States. Widely used chemicals like bisphenol A, phthalates, and pesticides are associated with long-term health problems in children. Uh, most of them come from pesticide residuals on fruits and vegetables. The point of it is even when we're eating good, like fruits and vegetables, we're getting exposed to chemicals that are toxic, that rev up free radicals, that damage our health and our physiology. Probably one of the best books ever written on these concepts. It's over a thousand pages, specifically 1,084 pages, coming out in 2006, Oxidative Stress, Disease, and Cancer. What is important in this book is that the central theme is the mitochondria. We're looking at that picture right there, the center of that picture, that's the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the primary generator of the free radical, but it is also the primary thing that is damaged by the free radicals. Consequently, the mitochondrial health is key to understanding health and physiology. Uh, this is more of the same particular book, including this picture, which is one of my all-time favorite pictures. It just reminds the reader that the key to health and longevity and wellness is looking at this thing called free radicals. Free radicals are often made, are, are initially made out of oxygen. Consequently, they are usually referred to as ROS, which stands for reactive oxygen species, which is that, that little star thing there in the middle. And all of the different things that drive the production of free radicals, including low antioxidant defenses, I mean, strategies to crank that up are, are, are wonderful benefits to human health and physiology. You look at a lot of these other guys that are around here, and they are things to avoid. And as a chiropractor, I was thrilled that right here in the top right corner, they actually included the neurological, the neurochemical consequences of the chiropractic subluxation as being a driving factor in the production of free radicals. Again, we don't want to produce these free radicals, but it's going to happen because we live in a world that is full of toxins. Can we neutralize these guys before they do damage? Wait till I show you some of the studies, man. They're, they're, they're thrilling. Uh, this book here is just more of the same, showing you that these things just are never stopping. They're never going to stop. A 2008 book, Oxidative Stress and Aging from Model Systems to Human Diseases. Uh, take a look at what's on the cover of their book. Aging a theory based on free radical and radiation chemistry by Denham Harmon, which we had earlier in this in this presentation. Uh, this book here, Mitochondrial Medicine, also coming out in two Thursday. These are expensive medical texts. It costs a couple hundred dollars to buy. Those of you that have seen me on the road doing my classes know that I go over facets of these books that I think are appropriate to the class, but they're fascinating to know because once you do this, you get a unique perspective on on health, disease, and degeneration and the things that are necessary in order to, to, to change the tide, in order to change what's going on, in order to help people who desire to live healthily to 132 actually have that potential. That, once again, is my personal goal. All of these guys are talking about the mitochondria. Remember, the mitochondria is the organelle within our cells that makes us energy. It gives us the energy to be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and to move our muscles and to talk and to listen and all of these things. It's based upon this energy, but the problem is, as we make this energy, we also make free radicals. And these free radicals are probably the key to health and longevity and to aging and to degeneration. So if we can figure out how to get more energy and less free radicals, that's going to be a component of the desired effect. Uh, this is another book, this one coming out even more recently. This is a um, 
2011 book. Uh, Dr. Lauren Klum is the uh, the second author there. If you look at it, and and I know her. She is the um, the daughter of uh, the former president of Life Chiropractic College West, Dr. Dr. Jerry Klum, who I think the world of, and uh, I know his daughter quite well, and I, I I see her around, and I I acknowledge her as being a very smart person. Who I always want to claim that I have some influence. On the students that I've had that go on to, to to make their own way and do things like this, because the, this is sort of the message that I share at the college. The bottom lines are here: antioxidants. Now, most everybody knows what an antioxidant is, but a lot of times there is some confusion, and that confusion is actually the main theme of this webinar. Exogenous antioxidants are antioxidants that almost everybody knows about. Exogenous antioxidants are ones that your body cannot make. They must come from your diet, like vitamin C and vitamin E. Our bodies can't make these things. They have to be in our diets. And there's, there's literally hundreds and thousands of more that typically go into our bodies by the consumption of fruits and vegetables. And these guys are excellent at neutralizing free radicals that live in our blood vessels and other tissues. However, there is another group of antioxidants, and it's called the endogenous antioxidants. Endogenous antioxidants are not part of our diets. They are made by our DNA. There are, there are many of them, but the main three guys are called superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. These are the main three endogenous antioxidants, and these guys are critical. They're now acknowledging these guys are critical. They're different than the exogenous guys who are critical for neutralizing free radicals in our bloodstream. But they, the ones in our bloodstream are not as good at neutralizing free radicals that are inside the cell membrane. The ones that are inside the cell membrane are largely completely dependent upon the endogenous antioxidant array. And that's because superoxide dismutase catalase and glutathione peroxidase are made by the DNA, which is inside the cell membrane. So these are the ones that protect the cell from the inside. And so they're critically important in human physiology. In fact, this reference that I put here um, that came out in 2006 says endogenous antioxidants have enormous advantage over exogenous antioxidants. The context of that is inside the cell itself. Uh, this guy here is an important player in all of this. If you look once again at the prior slide, the first endogenous antioxidant is called superoxide dismutase. I'm going to show you a little bit of its physiology momentarily, but you should know this. This is the guy that discovered it. His name is Joe McCord. And Joe McCord, if you remember when I did the, the, the protandum uh, uh, database search in the, the, in the National Library of Medicine using PubMed, this guy was a co-author on seven of the eight articles that have so far hit the PubMed database. And he discovered superoxide dismutase, and consequently, he is a pioneer in changing the whole way we think about free radicals and antioxidations. Uh, Joe McCord did this in 1969, and the result he got the Cresser Medal, the Elliott Cresser Medal, and other recipients include none other than Henry Ford, Orville Wright. This gets closer. ASE, superoxide dismutase, ASE. ASE means it is an enzyme. All enzymes are proteins. All proteins are assembled by our DNA. The three main endogenous antioxidant protein enzymes made by our DNA are superoxide dismutase, see the ASE there, catalase, once again, see the ASE there, and glutathione peroxidase. Hey, by the way, it's the glutathione that has the cysteine amino acid that makes it in part work so, so well. Uh, the real technicality of it, and this isn't too bad, it can be way worse than this, this is not that bad. If you kind of look right here, we make the energy of life, the ATP of life, the energy that makes us work, we make it out of oxygen and glucose. Fortunately, about 95% of the oxygen and glucose that we consume goes to make ATP energy. The problem is about 5%, at least from the writings of um, Dr. Russell Blaylock, about 5% create free radicals. Often these free, these, because these free radicals are made out of oxygen, often they're referred to as oxygen free radicals. Often they're called reactive oxygen species. So just simply abbreviated, we saw that one star picture, ROS. Um, the first reactive oxygen species free radical is called the superoxide free radical. The superoxide free radical can be dismantled into hydrogen peroxide, that's H2O2, plus water, but the dismantling is done by an endogenous 
antioxidant called superoxide dismutase. This is the one that was discovered by Dr. Jill McCord. Then the hydrogen peroxide should further be catabolized, and it is, by another endogenous antioxidant called catalase and one called glutathione peroxidase. These guys have the ability to take the H2O2, the hydrogen peroxide, and convert it into a totally inert and good for its molecules, specifically oxygen plus water. A combination of five medicinal plants have been proven to increase the production of the endogenous antioxidant array, upregulating the DNA. These plants are upregulating the DNA production of five antioxidants. So I've listed them there for you. All five of them have been put into a patented product called Protandum. The way I found this is just by going to the PubMed database and typing in Protandum, and those are the eight studies that have come up. Now, I have personally been taking Protandum for about five years, and I was getting it over the counter at GNC Nutrition. It has since then gone into a different marketing strategy, but this product has been out for some time, and because I'm a lit searcher with the with the desire to live to be 132 years of age, I started this product about five years ago. This is my favorite article. Like I say, there's eight. This is the eighth article that we looked at, and uh, it's called Induction of Human Superoxide Dismutase and Catalase in Vivo, means in living people, a fundamental new approach to antioxidant therapy. Again, you look at the last author there, it's Dr. Joe McCord. He's the guy that discovered superoxide dismutase. You can see very clearly there that the product that they're using is, is Protandum. What they're looking at on live humans, they're looking, they're, 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 they're assessing lipid peroxidation products, <clears throat> and they, they give you the words, and they just they frequently just slang out the word and call it T bars. And when right away, I mean, within just a few months, they found that the superoxide dismutase had increased by 30 percent, and the catalase by 54 percent. They have other studies that have come after this for whatever reason. I don't know. One day I, I hope to ask Dr. McCord, why did you not assess the, the glutathione peroxidase? They did not. They talk about it in this article, but they didn't actually assess it. Other studies have, and it went up even greater. There's one study I saw that it went up 300 percent, which is pretty important. If you look at these words here that I've scored, oxidative stress is now recognized to be associated with more than 200 diseases, as well as the normal aging process. There is strong correlation between T-bars, a marker of lipid peroxidation, and products that reflects oxidative damage to, to the DNA. So again, they're measuring what's happening to the lipids as a marker of what is happening to our own genetic material, our DNA. So this is the bottom line. In fact, this is my, um, my, my last page with you. Our planet is significantly more toxic today than, than ever before. I mean, there is just no doubt. If I tell my classes, both undergrad and postgrad, is that in my mind, the biggest difference between chiropractic today and chiropractic of yesteryear is the number of environmental chemical toxins that our patient population is exposed to. Because so many of these toxins are neurotoxins, and we pride ourselves on doctors that treat the nervous system. This is critically important for us as clinical chiropractors. Toxins magnify the productions of free radicals. I mean, this is the work of Perlmutter. It says, our people are living in silent inflammation. Our average omega-6, omega-3 ratio is about 25 to 1. It should be less than 4 to 1. Inflammation also drives the production of free radicals. Free radicals are the ultimate cause of aging and degeneration. This is a winning strategy. Balance your omega-6 and omega-3. Two, avoid toxins. Look at the President's Cancer Panel stuff. Look at their 10 recommendations. Avoid toxins. It's just a no-brainer. Don't put toxins in your body. Ramp up your detoxification protocols, as well as what is healthy eating. I mean, most people don't have any clues to what healthy eating is. Take your, in, take your exogenous antioxidants. I mean, they work different than what we're doing this day, and you, and you should still do that. And lastly, upregulate your own genetic endogenous antioxidant array. This is, this is some of the ways that low-level laser therapy works, but as far as I can tell, the protocol that has more research behind it than anything else it's taking this product called Protandum. So as far as I can tell, all of us should be doing all of these every day, and a lot of us are, but we have missed this upregulation of the endogenous antioxidant array on a daily basis through taking a really simple combination of five medicinal plants that they put together called Protandum. So the big announcement that they have been, been, been advertising on my behalf is that Protandum and the company that actually makes them, Protendum is the product, the company that makes it is called LifeVantage. They have approached me and they have asked me to initiate a partnership with them and I have done so. I have a specific goal and that specific goal 
is that I want to be on their scientific advisory board. So hopefully with the help of, of, of a lot of you guys, I'm going to make that goal. I want to be on that advisory board because I want them to understand a chiropractic perspective and how this is important to chiropractic. I have personally met with the operating officers of this company. I have digested all the published studies on the topic. I have reviewed all of the projects that are in progress that will hit the PubMed database in the next year or so. There's actually 19 product projects that are in progress right now. I have personally talked to Dr. Joe McCord, the guy that discovered superoxide dismutase. I had an opportunity to ask him anything I want, and I asked him everything I could think of. Remember, again, he's the guy that discovered superoxide dismutase in 1969. In fact, interestingly, when they measure superoxide dismutase, they measure it in McCord units as a consequence of the man that um, discovered it. My component of this webinar has now concluded.